Go, go. Hey, what's up, guys? Air Iron Overload.io Hardcore 62 coming your way. Bulking with Masteron. Is it possible? So, this is a really fun one. If you haven't checked out our last episode, 61, we did a similar topic about bulking with Anivore. And we showed you how it can be done. This time, we're going to talk about Masteron and explain how it can be done. So, first of all, with Masteron, we have to uh, understand what Masteron is all about, Mobster. And, and the first thing is, it is basically a pure dihydrotestosterone, DHT derivative, and it's going to not aromatize into estrogen. So you're not going to have any, uh, not even an ounce of water retention when you run Masteron. It's a hardener. It's going to harden your muscles up like a rock when you're on it. And at the end of the day, can you bulk up on Masteron alone? It's just not going to be plausible. Because of the way it's structured, it's going to harden you up, but it's not going to bulk you at all. But what you can do with Masteron is you can stack it with other steroids to help you bulk up. And you can absolutely do that. In fact, bodybuilders at the highest levels, Mobster, Olymp Mr. Olympia guys who are competing at the open competition, they are most certainly using Masteron <laughs> universally. And you must to keep up with your peers. So we're going to get into that on this podcast. So Masteron, you know, I've used it several times. Um, really, really effective steroid. Um, you can run anywhere from 200 to 300, up to 500 for an average user. Some guys go to six. And then if you're a professional, you'll go even higher, 800, 1,000, 1,200 milligrams a week even. So, but if you're just like a normal Joe, like 99% of you who listens to this podcast, 500 milligrams is plenty, even 400 milligrams is plenty of this stuff. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to kind of stack it with some other steroids to do a bulk and you can get some really, really impressive results. So we're going to talk about some of the uh, steroids that the professionals are using and the way they're using Masteron as well in this podcast. But Mobster, I wanted to bring you in early on this one. Touch on uh, Masteron a little bit. What do you what do you like and what do you not like about Masteron, first off? Uh, hands in the air, guys. Never use Masteron, but then I'm not a bodybuilder. Uh, I've talked about the hardness of muscles, and I can understand the feelings. Hey, Steve, I do crazy shit for my biceps, especially when I'm doing the bulking and the heavy power stuff. I'm throwing around 200-pound dumbbells, guys. And perversely, I think my muscles used to feel harder when I was using a lot less and I trained more like a bodybuilder back in the day. That's not to say that they're not hard, but not as hard as they used to feel then. There's a weird, there's a weird kind of thing out there. And, but I get it because, of course, I've trained like that in the past. Right? And it's, it's thus. Uh, if you aren't a competing bodybuilder, you kind of want it, there's a there's a kind of feedback mechanism that gives a certain pleasure center in the brain, a little ding of the bell and that is if i flex my muscles and i feel hard this is great and that's what masteron does now as a competing bodybuilder it's less because no one's up on the stage they poking them with a finger going oh my god his pecs are like rocks no one's doing that so it's when we talk about a hardener in that situation we're talking about the appearance we're talking about and again i quote because again it's my generation steve in fact it's more or less my bloody age. Dorian Yates having a grainy, gnarly appearance. And that was how he was described by other bodybuilders. They said, if you stood next to him, you didn't just have the shape and the insertions and the occasional bit of vascularity. When you got right up close, it was almost a grainy, granular, like he'd been chipped out of stone kind of appearance. And that, that sense of being made out of rock visually statuesque almost Steve on stage is very very difficult to achieve but if you train like a motherfucker eat on point and do your cardio and you respond well as all the genetic freaks do to PEDs but specifically in this example to Masteron and again it doesn't have to be crazy doses like Steve just said and you are able to manipulate your wall etc etc there's going to be a couple of other people on stage, but you would almost certainly, if you can do that, have that grainy, gnarly, made out of rock, poke you with a finger, it's just going to bounce right the fuck back kind of appearance. And that is, it's incredibly attractive to a certain part of our audience. The idea that that's how they're going to feel, that's how it's going to look to other people. 
and again, Steve, it's it's something you've almost got to see it in person. So yeah, on 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 that bulking on Mastron again. The, 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 the other the, the things that come with DHE stuff is almost the masculinity type stuff. So, you know, it's the sort of the voice gets deeper. No good for women, but great for guys. The, the, thick, the hair thickens up and so on and so forth. And testosterone in men, but specifically, for example, Masteron and the DHT is going to just make you feel that much more manly, but not as a bulker. It's not going to put on pounds of muscle, not on its own. It's going to be definitely, and Steve and I just does, done this in the other show, when we talked about Anavar as a bulk, and I said, absolutely, you can put a muscle with Anavar. Absolutely, you could run it as a bulk. It won't be a 20-pound bulk, as Steve said, but it will certainly be some amount of muscle. Masteron is almost going to be negligible, one or two pounds. And if arguably, Steve, you're going to actually lose a little bit of weight because you should, quote-unquote, get harder, and therefore you're going to lose a bit of body fat and lose a bit of water. But the appearance of the muscle is going to be that much more. Actually, visually, it's going to look like you've added muscle. It's going to look like you've got bigger. But here's the thing, and Steve done it in the last show. It To me, Steve, this is absolutely a drug. I would almost never, I can't think of a single situation for me as a strength athlete, but even if I was a bodybuilder, I would run this solo. I would absolutely run it as a part of the stack. 100% I could see me putting something like this there or thereabouts in a competition stack for the stage, for a modelling gig, whatever. But even if I wasn't doing those things, even if I called myself a recreational bodybuilder, but I still wanted to look good for the beach, I still wanted to look good for family pictures and whatever else, uh, by the pool, for the ladies down the club or wherever else, wherever it is that you guys are training for, you've all got your own targets and, and ambitions. I can absolutely see me run this at a moderate amount in combination with other steroids. And I think we did, in the last show, we said Anava with testosterone. And I could see that. Uh, any any short, medium, or long acting S of testosterone here, Steve. And again, the two together, I, I, I'm not a huge fan. And again, this is for our recreational and, and uh, non competitive listeners, which would be the majority. Two, maybe three steroids here. I, I'm, an, I'm not a fan of Kickstarter, so we've got a podcast coming up on that for reasons that I'll get into on that podcast. So I don't see the necessity here, Steve. I, I, again, if, especially if you've never run this before, keep it real, real simple. For me, Master On would be tightening the diet, cleaning all the crap out, cutting my fat, m- m- manipulating till I get the right results, my carbohydrate intake, increase my protein a little bit, and then running at the dose that Steve's already said, and again, the sweet spot for testosterone, again, an enamphate, which is gonna, doesn't work for me, but would probably work for most of our listeners, 500 milligrams. Keep it very, very simple. Perhaps the next time you decide to run master on the test, you bring something else in and you do that and so on. It's, it's how the results. So there's a bunch of things here in terms of getting the best from running master, master on and test, et cetera, et cetera. Make notes, take pictures, and I think that's especially true with Masteron, Steve. I want to, it's difficult sometimes when you're in the middle of a cycle and training your ass off to see the difference, but you can do photographs with the same light and say, hey, my t- I can actually see detail in my chest. I can actually see the separation between my muscles that much better. I'm holding these photographs up and I can see there's a line there that wasn't there and so on and so forth. And then how did I feel on that cycle? Did my muscles literally feel harder? Was I stronger? Did the scale change? Did the scale stay the same, but I still look better, which means I've dropped fat and added muscle. This is what training logs and training diaries are for. And again, it'd be a great way of getting good feedback or bad feedback from yourself that you can go back and look at and then on the next cycle, manipulate and change the parameters. What would you, Steve, in terms of running with it? And how would you get the feedback that I've just touched upon in terms of photographs and training logs and so on? Well, let's take a look at professionals. How do professionals run it? uh to to bulk up so look at your boy monstro his cycle that he got uh he logged on the forum to get his pro card and he didn't use masteron but what he did use was proviron and proviron is masteron in oral form they're pretty much the same thing they're both the pure dht derivatives so he used masteron 50 to 100 milligrams a day so that would equate 
I would say 50 milligrams of proviron a day would equate to about 400, 500 milligrams of Masteron. So if he was running at 100 milligrams of the proviron, that would mean he's running about 1,000 milligrams of Masteron. And along with it, what was he running with it? He was running Anadrol, Tren, and Testosterone. And those three are really good staple steroids. And here's a key. He was, he was, this was a early log before his competition where he was growing. His goal on this, on this stack was to grow. His goal wasn't to cut down ahead of his competition. So he still used the, the DHT derivative in there anyway. And for him, the testosterone and the trend have really good synergy when it comes to getting big. Now, when you add the masteron on top of those, especially with trend, let's just take trend. It's like it's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They just go really well together. Not only that, is the masteron can actually help uh, control the estrogen and the prolactin effects of both your testosterone and your trend. So you see, the masteron is very effective um for that reason and the synergy makes it extremely effective so i have a lot of respect for using masteron with trend and i have a lot of respect for using masteron with testosterone and that's why the professionals at that high level that's why they 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 most certainly will use it so anywhere in that um in that range anywhere from 400 up to a thousand milligrams if you want to do a major bulker and add testosterone and trend to that stack would work really really good i have a lot of respect for for those in there as well. Another thing too, he was using, he was using HGH and he was using insulin as well. So he was using several different things. He was using some, some peptides. So it wasn't just those three that he was using, but that gives you a general sense of what they use. And then there's the anandrol as well. Now you stack the anandrol. Anandrol is also a DHT derivative, but it's very different than Masteron because anandrol is extremely androgenic. Masteron is not. Anadrol is extremely liver toxic. Mastron is not. Anadrol will bind to estrogen receptors in the body. It will not aromatize like Mastron won't, obviously, because they're both DHT derivatives. But Anadrol will bind to estrogen receptors. Mastron will not. So you see, Mastron has the advantage over Anadrol on a lot of different areas, but it doesn't have the advantage when it comes to Estrogen binding, which some of you will want in a bulk, and androgenic effects, which some of you want in a bulk. But that's why we stack the steroids. That's the whole idea. We're getting the differences from different steroids. You add the Masteron as a pure DHT derivative with no gains, no gains in there. Um, it's not going to play games with you like Anadrol will as a DHT derivative. It's going to be a pure DHT, no surprises. It's not going to dry your joints like crazy, like Winstrol will, which is a DHT derivative, but it's going to give you those DHT properties in a bulk. Now, why would that come in handy in a bulk, DHT properties? So you can harden that muscle. You get bigger and then you harden the muscle. When you flex, your muscles are rock hard. And that's what we want. You're wearing a cutoff shirt or you know a nice t-shirt where the it's a short sleeve. You flex your arm. You see your muscle pop out through that T-shirt. Okay, look at the old videos of Arnold in the in the eighties and nineties where he would wear shirts like that in the, in the movies, and you'd see his bicep popping out of his shirt. That was cool. That was cool. A lot of people like that. That's what Masteron can give you. And I guarantee you, Arnold was messing around with Masteron, Provire and Masteron. Arnold did use a lot of throughout his bodybuilding history, all the way from the late sixties all the way throughout his movie career into the 90s. Mobster? Yeah, I mean, no, I'll just touch on that, and then I'm going to tell you how to get the best uh, from any particular PD, but specifically the Day Master on, right? So, yeah, on the movie star stuff, see, I think his awareness of the influence, and he wasn't the only one, but obviously he come from the bodybuilding when the other uh, movie stars, action stars said not. Uh, but although they all trained, ironically, he was the only bodybuilder and certainly the only Mr. Olympia. He had an awareness of how if he did certain things, you might see it com comical, funny, or you might literally go, hell yeah, make, make you want to go down the gym. I, I'm as guilty as the next person, Stephen, watching 
one or two of the early Rocky montages that wanted to go train. And he wasn't a bodybuilder, he was a boxer. So, yeah, absolutely the influence of him popping a bicep. Now, something I want to make a point of here, and it specifically applies to Mastron in this particular example. And I talk about training and diet. And in fact, if you listen to the previous podcast, there's a little bit more detail there. But I want to touch on this again here, Steve. Less detail on two, but more detail on, on the last one. Right. If you want to get the best at a, a drug which, like Mastron, hardens you up, you don't just take the drug and sit there on your ass twiddling your thumbs. You don't even just go to the gym and do the same old shit you were doing before. If you train the same, if you eat the same and you take mass muscle, you might see the tiniest, a small benefit. But if you go to the gym, I'm on PEDs, I'm stacking, Mastron's in the mix, Mastron's being run solo, and you put the work in and you deliberately, for example, Steve, focus on contracting the muscle, say, for example, on bench press or flies. Literally, I want my pecs to feel like rocks, so you work on squeezing the fuck out of them in the contracted position. Same for biceps, same for triceps. Listen, Steve, when I'm doing the power shit, when I'm throwing around at big weights, I am not holding the fucking thing in the contracted position on top. I move the weight from A to B, and if I'm lucky, I get bigger and stronger. Honestly, it's almost a secondary added bonus. But if I'm deliberately trying to harden my muscles up, my diet's got to be on point. My training is, I'm literally, as I said, working on that thing. And one more tip, and this is the one, the last one, and I think the most important here, uh, and this applies whether you're using mass on or not, if you want, quote, unquote, muscles to feel harder, to be hardened muscles, pose. And I mean pose. I don't just mean quick, like Arnold was in the movie, popping his bicep out of his shirt for the co-star for the moment when it's on the screen or whatever else. I mean, in reality, posing, properly done posing is hard. And if you're on stage, even in the even up to the pro level, sometimes... Just standing there in what we love to euphemistically call the relaxed position is horrendous. It really means semi-flexed. And you might be on stage longer than you thought you was going to be. There are professional bodybuilders. You can see, I've been in a flex wheeler back in the day, Steve. And someone had been counted as a 10 and he was barely making it to eight. And in reality, those that do practice their posing can do certain poses, certain positions repeatedly, half an hour to an hour, and they will tell you, especially if they've done a photo shoot to go with it, how goddamn hard that is. But that, combined with the diet, combined with the kind of training that I've touched upon, and with Mastoron in the mix, is absolutely going to harden the fuck up. It's literally almost like the muscles get used to being in that kind of what we... Uh, people kind of like the idea of it's kind of half-pumped, half-contracted. It's not, but it feels like it is. And that will give you the absolute best results. Literally, guys, if you do five minutes, do 10. If you do 10, do 20. And do that at the same time that you're using Mastoron and you've tightened the diet up and you're working on that contracted position stuff that I touched upon. And tell me the difference between the beginning of the cycle, if you've never done it before like that, and the end of the cycle. And then do another cycle where you don't do any of those things. You just take the mass on. I'm telling you, the suggestions I've given you, that flexing and contracting and practicing and posing will harden you the fuck up like you wouldn't believe. And mass on is just going to add another level to that. You will get 40, 50, 60% better results from someone else, your twin brother or twin sister, that didn't do those things if you do those things. What do you think on that, Steve, in terms of the flexing and the contracting uh, before we finish off? Yes, sir, for sure. Yeah, so again, we go back to in the last podcast I explained about SHBG. A lot of people don't know about it. Sex hormone binding globulin. And before you know, I get into the training, we got to understand this is in there. It's a survival mechanism made to keep us alive. So by Masteron is really good at binding the SHB. It's another reason why, yes, you can bulk on Masteron when you're stacking with other steroids. And it does a great job of helping those other steroids work better. 
Because when you get your SHBG down, and believe me, Masteron is a great, great anabolic steroid for dropping SHBG. So when that happens, you're allowing the other steroids to work even better. So it's very important to understand that. And that's one of the keys to building more muscle and getting stronger. And in the process, when you weight train, you're able to see more results. You're able to get more results. You're able to experience better results. I personally have a lot of respect for um, for Masteron for that reason. So when you're stacking it, so when you go work out, you really want to wear out that muscle. You want to make sure that that muscle is being taken care of and that muscle is being stimulated and you're training that muscle and forcing it to grow. So a lot of people like to do drop sets on Masteron. They like to really uh, you know, condition that muscle and wear it out. That's one of the keys too. You know, at the end of the day, when you're using a DHT derivative like this, you also have to be aware of the joint discomfort that can come with it. So although it's not as bad as Winstrol, there is going to be some joint issues. So you have to be a little smart when you're using Masteron. A lot of pro competitors at the high levels, they'll wait to use Masteron as they get closer to a competition. And then they'll start basically doing more drop sets and high repetitions and stuff. And they're not really training that heavy in the gym. So jump in, Mobster. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I, I've described this in another show, Steve. <laughs> it's the same as when we talk about going to 20 pounds and it's not as much fun as you think. So, uh, and, and I'm not a competing bodybuilder, but I have been around the game a long time. I'm incredibly well read in that particular regard. So an analogy that I've used before was Doreen Yates saying that he got down to this ridiculously low percentage of body fat, which is going to happen in a competition cycle, including Masteron. Um, and unless, even if you didn't, even if there was still a bit of body fat in there, can you imagine how uncomfortable it would actually be if your muscles were rock hard all the time? It'd actually probably be like a medical condition, Steve. And if you just, everything you did involve some sort of semi-partial contraction, cleaning your teeth and your biceps were hitting up against your forearm and both muscles were rock hard. It'd be uncomfortable cleaning your teeth. So Dorian Yates' story, right? The Dorian Yates story is thus. He gets down to some really stupidly low body fat, let's say 4 or 5%, Steve, which is low as fuck. He's gnarly, he's grainy, he's etc. Like I said at the beginning of the show. He said that the pad of tissue the skin and I think there's a bit of fiber in there, tendons and so on and so forth, and a little bit of meat. There's a he says in the middle of your foot, underneath the bony structure between there and the sole, there's a little pad of like watery fat, whatever you want to call it. And that got dissipated because he was so lean. It was like one of the last places he's gonna lose body fat from. And so there's a little bit of water gone, he's dry, he's lean, he's hardly any body fat, etc. So he said it was painful to walk around. He would have to wear slippers or some sort of sliders backstage because it was literally painful for him to be 260 pounds, lean and dry as fuck, hard as fuck, gnarly as fuck, walking around backstage was actually physically uncomfortable. Now, like Steve said, it's not that dry sensation that you might get from Winstrow, where I think Steve described in a show that we did recently, there's almost a sensation of the, the tendons moving around and the muscles pulling on it. And it almost feels like, you know, I, I can imagine, Steve, it'd be like the, those, the, 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 the bow on a violin, kind of the, rubbing something dry up. And that. it's going to be, oh, God. That, you know, you're dry, you look at amazing in the mirror, but it's uncomfortable as hell. Masteron is not quite as bad as that, but bad enough that when you do get your body back well under the 8%, 7% level, you're going to notice a certain level of uncomfortableness that you didn't think came with this. You would imagine that you feel like Superman. No, being super lean, especially super lean for stage, it's kind of unhealthy. You're more likely to get the flu. You're more likely to get stomach bugs. Your immune system's struggling. So again, it's one of those things. This is the reason, again, why back in the day and now, it's very, very difficult to say that kind of lean and in that kind of shape, unless you've got some sort of medical issue. 
all year round. And in fact, Steve talks about what the, the SHBG and as the body does, it protects itself, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is the reason again why people and, and you'd have to be physically set up for it in the right environment all the time to be super comfortable being super lean. Now, again, the stage for the day, and again, professional bodybuilders talk about this sometimes, they talk about it being a matter of hours, Steve. Four or five hours when I looked like the next best thing ever. They've actually complaining right now, this year's Mr. Olympia, 2023 as we record the show, uh, that the show was late in the evening and they would prefer it in the morning. That's the difference between unbelievable, oh my God, what the fuck kind of condition and stressing and cortisol and water and more food would make having as it was this year, Steve, at half past 10, 11 o'clock at night. So that's the level of condition. As they took years ago, having oxygen cylinders backstage and having doctors backstage because you are making yourself deliberately unhealthy. Now, for most listeners, this isn't an issue. It might be an issue for someone like um, Monstro that Steve mentioned earlier on, being in that kind of crazy fucks up, oh my good grief, is that a white light at the end of the tunnel condition, but winning and getting an IFBB pro card or our typical listener. What does our typical listener want? Our typical listener wants hardened muscles, more visible muscles. So therefore, they don't have to get down to 4% or 3% or 2% or some sort of world record-breaking percentage. They just want to get leaner. And they just want their muscles to feel when they're flexing, feel when they're posing that much harder. And again, the feedback from that, the how you feel with your girlfriend's touching your chest, whatever, your partner's touching your chest, or even yourself in the gym, that sort of sense, Steve, if you're chaining chest and you're doing inclined dumbbells or something like that, and as the muscles bunch together at the top, how that feels to you, listener, would be great. But it doesn't need to be 3, 4, 2%, 1%. It doesn't need to be that low. You just want to have that sensation of how great that feels. And I get it. Absolutely, I get it. I've been like that back in the day, squeezing my biceps, popping on Arnold. And uh, look at who, uh, Steve, even this one, when you're especially young, I think I was started when I was 15. I can imagine if I had started, I was 12 or 13. Mummy, mummy, come and feel my muscles. Can you imagine? And you want her to feel the, the biceps. Eventually, that becomes a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or whatever. Uh, but there's a thing. When you're in training, in the gym, sensation of the pump is great sensation of a new pr when it comes to lifting weights is great and sensation of the muscles feeling rock hard and firm is good any more thoughts Steve, before we go into the disclaimer yeah my thoughts are make sure the diet make sure you're eating good nutritious food as well if you want to bulk or you want to cut it all boils down to diet i don't care what you're trying to do a healthy body is going to react much better to any fitness goal that you have than an unhealthy body. And just because you can get away with it doesn't mean that it's a good idea to do. We see this all the time in athletes that get away with eating like shit and then they get later in their career and they wonder what the hell happened. And you have someone like Tom Brady who, you know, you can go read his book on what he eats. He eats nothing but nutritious whole food options. He doesn't eat any junk food. He doesn't eat any cereal, no fake food in his diet, no comfort food. And amazingly, he went on for years. He can still play if he wanted to now. He could still play. So he's um he's a perfect example of what happens when you take care of your diet. Absolutely, Steve. If your diet some point and your training some point, your results, as I said earlier on, are going to be that much better than just running the master on and keeping everything else the same. You might see something, but you won't see as much as if you put the extra work in and flexed and contracted and posed, etc. Let us know what you think on Mastron for hardening uh, or bulking. What's been your experience? Post in the comments below. Please note, we are not doctors and the opinions are ours. It's our view and based on our experience and views on the topic. Our podcast of informational purposes and entertainment only. The freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies. <laughs>